Every step I take, I move my truth. Every time they tell me stop, I use. Every comment, hate that makes my feel gather up my energy and boom. I hear them talking, saying the way that I move is so reckless. That is a part of my mind I've been blessed with. Giving my blood so I am relentless. All right, this is a Keep Hammering Collective with Eric McCormick, otherwise known as Outlaw Strength. How you doing, brother? I'm good, brother. How are you? Oh, man. Well, we've had a pretty fun morning so far. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a good grind already this morning. Yeah, it's uh, first. Well, not no, not first day, but second day of the lift run shoot experience. Mm -hmm. We're here in Springfield, Oregon. So last night we were at the Bow Rag getting everybody dialed in. I don't know where you were. You were out partying, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I was running around, hanging out with the kids, <laughs> dragging uh, Michael up Spencer's. That's what oh, I that's yesterday. right. That's right. How was that? Oh, it was great. Yeah, yeah. two days here in Eugene. Definitely did uh, Pisco one day, and then oh. I did Spencer's the other day and drug my son up both of those days. It was great. How's he doing? Oh, he's doing pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's doing pretty good. Hunter and Michael both came out and spent uh, a few days out in Phoenix. Mm. And it was good. They did their like their first uh, trip together. Mm. Oh, yeah, traveling. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. They uh, they stayed at some resort and did the Phoenix thing and checked in with me. But yeah, they had a great trip out there. It was just so much to do out in Phoenix. Yeah, no, it's an it's a cool cool spot, cool town for sure. Mm -hmm. Huge. I like Camelback. Yeah, yeah, and also <laughs> Piasqua. That's that's like the mountain I do all the time. Now. Oh, I haven't been there. Yeah, you need to come check it out. It's uh, it's a good climb that you're doing. It's about the same as Pisgah, but you yeah. really have to pay attention. It's not as much climbing as a uh, Camelback. You know, you have to do a yeah. lot of rock climbing. Right. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty dangerous. I oh, took really? a, I took a pretty bad spill running down that thing and mm. almost broke my neck. But Caught a toe or something. Remember, I sent you that picture. Yeah. Of my knee? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. God. Dangerous. Dangerous running down rock, rock, sharp yeah. rocks. Yeah. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, for those that don't know, <clears throat> you've been my trainer. I think we started in 2011 or something like that. Yeah. Something like that. And then went for something like 12 years. Mm -hmm. And then you moved, you gave up on me, moved to <laughs> Phoenix. Um, but yeah, we've had a lot of years of training. And it's, it's awesome. Oh, awesome. so many uh, grinding workouts together. It's yeah. Just, yeah. We had, I mean, we started off a long time ago, huh? Yep. Yep. And it's like, you definitely have got me, helped me get to the next level for sure, as far as physical conditioning, uh, body maintenance. Um, yeah. Just taking care of, you know, this machine mm -hmm. that we, we have one shot at. So uh, super thankful for all you've done for me. But it was like, I just loved having you influence so many people today, like here for the lift run shoot experience to get a taste of what you do and why you're so good. Um, so yeah, this morning was great. Ran them through the workout. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a pretty, the energy was pretty off the charts. Wasn't yeah. It? Yeah, I think they would have been good with just the warm up being the workout. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put a little extra stank on that. And as you see, we didn't stretch today. I know that was so I had very limited time of what that was. So we just yeah. drove right into it, and man, we grind. It was so good. Yeah. So how long was the warm up? Or about like a half hour? I think it was maybe about a half hour. And then the circuit was another half hour, 35 minutes. Yeah. 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 I think that workout was about an hour and five minutes, mm -hmm. I think, total. Mm -hmm. um, but we did, uh, what, a couple hundred reps of just squats and lunges and blasts of their legs. And it's crazy. No weight. No weight. All body weight. That's All what people, I don't think people realize how much you can, I don't know, get those legs broke down with just body weight. Oh, I think it's such a, a overlooked area that people really don't pay attention to is just be able to move your body. Those calisthenics are just a great way of just connecting with your body. And mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, if you've ever done 200 uh, squats and lunges repetition and no breaks, yeah. you can, and changing the, the tension, speed, uh, where those angles are, yeah, you can just trash it 
trash your legs. Yeah. And then we went into core. <laughs> yeah. So and then, I don't know why you were, you were adding stuff to me. Yeah. You, you were coming over and putting extra stank on me hey, just cause. You're the man. You're the man. You, you have an advantage cause you do that all the time. So I thought, well, we got to get Eric a little workout too. So I was hitting your stomach a little bit, then throwing your legs around and you had to like resist it, keep them off the ground. But yeah, you're a beast at freaking abs, dude. Remember when we were talking about a uh, time that I was hitting you with a stick? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I thought, well, this will make me tougher. It's always the goal. How do I get tougher? Right. Yeah. Right. We sort of so, worked outside that box a little bit back in those days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, today was fun though. I saw a lot of guys hurting. Mm. hurting in that but a lot of tough they're giving their all they really were i mean it, it hurts everybody so mm -hmm. no, i'm not saying like taking a shot at anybody because it i don't care who you are this is hard but they they showed heart mm -hmm. they were giving their best for sure yeah we had um six different stations that we ran people through mm -hmm. of all different movements and just the aerodyne bike that's like the that's yeah. like the finisher to all and we ran through those stations twice, and then we stuck some weighted vests on them, had mm -hmm. them run down, carrying some weight. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a grind hour and five minutes. It was really good. A couple people puking. Oh, did you see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There were some people, there was there was more, uh, they, they actually made a designated trash can because everybody was peeking at, puking at Wayne's house. So yeah. they had a designated <laughs> trash can. I think I saw about three or four people over there, but some people branched off to the tent. Remember the guy said that, oh, yeah. I had to break off to the tent and puke. <laughs> Somebody puked out in the in the grass. Which Wayne's, <laughs> Wayne's probably not going to like that. <laughs> no. That's but, fertilizer. It's so, I, I mean, I'm so impressed that Wayne is so generous with his property and his house and his time is like he just opens you know anybody can stay out there it's just crazy how how accommodating he is oh yeah he just loves this he just yeah. loves this community and what you've done to bring people to to the community and for mm -hmm. you know the bow rack and just for bow hunting in general it's just amazing yeah, that's, uh, you know, we've talked about doing this lift, run, shoot in other places, which I'm sure it could work, but there's something about, I think people want to come and experience the bow rack, the Wayne's house out the shooting the range, mm -hmm. Pisgah, yeah. you know, doing what we do in, in here, yes. you know, in where I live. So they want it, they see it all the time because I'm always posting it. And so they just want a taste of like this. It wouldn't be the same in another city. No, no, it has to be here. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's the way I look. It has to be here. And that experience that we're putting on, mm -hmm. it, it is really what people want mm -hmm. and sort of need. And just the classrooms today that we were talking, I mean, it was so good. The feedback and the people sharing their stories of why they were there. I mean, it was, it's, I mean, it's empowering. It's it is. Empowering. That's why I say, I, you know, people, they come here and think they're getting something out of it. I'm getting more than anybody. And, and probably you are too. It's just that, that energy and that vulnerability and just seeing people and hearing their stories and, and learning more about where they're at in life and why they came here to, to grow and to challenge themselves. It's, I mean, it's as much for me as anybody, probably more for me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so selfishly, I put this on just because I love it. But if it can benefit other people, then I guess it's a win-win. Yeah. And, and so many people are here just for self-improvement. Mm -hmm. They're not here just to learn about archery or bow hunting. It's They're here to really experience growth and mm -hmm. development and improvement. And they had questions all over the board today. Yeah, it was incredible. I mean... So I, I don't know. I mean, so many different personalities and backgrounds and stories. Uh, what stood out for me was Jay was one of the ones he puked. He so he he had to go puke so he didn't finish his. I can't remember what station that was, but then he came back after he puked. Everybody was done, and he had he said, "I still owe thirty seconds on this." Oh yeah, how awesome! That's why he was there doing He's that. Jacked. He is jacked, man. But that, but that that's how you get to be the best mm -hmm. is is holding yourself accountable because mm -hmm. everybody was gassed anybody who went and puked would have just like i'm done yes but he'd know he's like no got more work to do that was and you know his his story is incredible too it's like he was homeless for a time been through a lot you know similar to 
to the story of you and Nick, you guys share your testimony basically, but he's been through a lot also. And so it makes like a day like today. And when you've been through real heartache and struggle, mm-hmm. a workout isn't, No, it's not. doesn't really compare. Yeah. So you can push through. Yeah. And did you see how the people sort of hovered around him for mm-hmm. that, that last time yeah. frame, that minute, and they were just sort of gravitating, watching what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah. It was, that was, that was one of my, uh, highlights to the morning workout also. And yeah, I was surprised that Jack guy made it all the way through bodybuilder, bodybuilder. He's a super good guy. <laughs> I met him at, uh, he ran the 10 K I had in Austin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just big boy getting in miles. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, just the stories from everybody. You know, we had the the woman there who's just doesn't know anything about hunting, wanted to learn about hunting and what, you know, how to how to start that journey. That was amazing. The guy who trained used to race with Lance. Yeah, that was a Lots surprise, of stories. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. I know. I just he got man. second place, right? That was one of the races. He got second place. He so said he made the podium. Yeah, he podium, made the podium. So he could have been top three. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I know he's in second for a bit, but it's uh, if you make the podium, yeah, whatever. You're but golden. great, great stories. And he's a beast. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. The one guy older than me. Yeah. He world. was, what, 58? Yeah. And he, we had to make an example of that, right? Mm-hmm. So cool, though. But um, I don't know. It's just, we're not done yet. We're We're halfway... I guess more than halfway through, but we're took a little break to come do a podcast. So yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's us awesome. Um, so how's uh, how? I mean, I know you just went back to Montana too, and you did an event back there. What was that about? Um, so that was Mountain Tough. It was called Tough Fest. Mm. Um, it's the second year they've had it out there. Uh, Mountain Opposite was part of that event. Um, yeah, it was such a great event. Um, we, uh, packed 32,000 meals, um, for the children out in the, uh, the local area. Hmm. And, uh, the workout was brutal. Um, true. It was there. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, it's a great company. I don't know if you've checked into them, but Mountain Tough is yeah. definitely a, a great company. It's an online training It's pretty much for, um, hunting, um, military, uh, it's all online, but yeah, it's a great company. I was mm-hmm. out there for five days. Five and, days. Yeah. Was it uh, the whole, was that how long it was? No, it was just a one day event, but I oh. was out there helping out and setting up and, um, yeah, Montana's, it's a great place. It's so really Bozeman? cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Bozeman. Um, me and Truett went out there the first introduction to meet them. And, uh, we went out there in December mm. It was 30 below zero. Whew. It's a different breed of person that lives God, in that kind of be environment. Tough out there. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. This last trip wasn't that, that bad probably. No, nice. it was, it was beautiful. It was like 80 degrees. The mountains were great. When did mm-hmm. some hikes, uh, I think it was about 150 people that went through this workout and it was a team environment. Mm. And, uh, they liked doing team workouts mm. And the workout was probably our, I think the top team was 56 minutes, Mm. but the top team, they all wore weighted vests to the whole workout and they were, yeah, they were savages. Jeez. That's, and how long was the workout, did you say? Um, it was, well, the top team did in 56 minutes, but most people were about an hour, hour and five, hour and 10. And that was just straight grinding the whole entire time. I know. I saw some clips. It looked Look tough. I think Truett put up some video. Yeah, I lost my voice. I definitely yeah. was uh, four hours of motivating and yeah. uh, in people's energy and spirit. Man, I, yeah, I lost it, but it was good. Did you have a team too? Or were you just kind of... I was just sort of emceeing and they wanted me coaching yeah. and just sort of uh, grabbing people and just motivating. And that's sort of what I love to do. I mm-hmm. just love to get people outside their comfort zone and get yeah. to that next level. That's sort of like my, my thing. Do they, do you work for them? Uh, no. Oh, no. but Mount they just invited me out there to, <laughs> to come do my thing. Oh, well, you're definitely, yeah, you're one of the best motivators I know. So, I mean, uh, it's an easy decision for them. And you sort of, uh, has, have helped me, uh, in that, in that world of, I mean, working with you for so long and just, uh, 
sort of fine tune my skill of how to get you to that next level, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So like, I, I don't know, it's, it's been my life, so I don't really remember, but what, as far as is helping me, what did you see in me that you needed to, like, what could people learn from as far as how have I got better in your eyes? Um, the main thing is that I think of adding tools to your utility belt that mm-hmm. you used to call. We used yeah. to say that you were Batman, I was Robin. So I would yeah. always run and get Batman his, whatever he needed. Right. And uh, just working with you for so long, it really taught me a lot of recovery and how to do more maintenance. And at first, when we first started training, it was all just grinding. Just, lift. just lift and yeah. just push. I remember that picture. You had 275 on incline and you were uh, doing like, you know, I don't know, God, at least 10 reps. Man, it makes my shoulders hurt just thinking oh. about the back in the days of how much we just disregarded recovery and just <laughs> yeah. how much can we lift today and what can we do today? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, those were some of the crazy days when we first started. Yeah. Yeah. We were just talking about the beast mode training camp back in oh, the day. Yeah. Remember when we started giving away your bows and yeah. how big those camps were? 30, was, 40, 50 people would show up yeah. to, to, to grind. It was like and, early in the morning too, I think. Oh, yeah. It was always early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was fun. That mm-hmm. was fun. So I'd have a, I put up a contest, whoever could beat me. Yes. So one time we did... I think body weight bench. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Like trying to do as many reps as you can of your body weight. Yes. I think uh, I got Nick. I think Nick did like 32 and I did 34. So, which that is hard to do body weight that many times. No, oh, for sure. Freaking hard. Yeah. But, uh, and then Jared Thomas beat me once. He got the bow. Remember what he was doing? It was the the dummy drag, the dummy flip that you had to lift that Over dummy up sh- and do the the lunges with a hundred and fifty pound yeah. dummy on there. I think he got like twelve or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, no, it was you do ten as fast as you can. Yes, and then if he could beat me, then he won, and he did beat me. Yeah, but it was close. Right? It was very <laughs> close. <laughs> Stick it in. What the funniest part was? <laughs> oh God. I can't, I don't even know what to say. But anyway, just, yeah, shit, I probably didn't, shouldn't. Go ahead and share. <laughs> we're already we're already in the trenches. Might as well share it's, this it's story. It can be so humbling because you can act however you want to act. And, and, you know, guys have ego. So, I mean, everybody has this air of whatever confidence, but it's tough to fake that. No, there so, is no faking. Yeah, I remember uh, a few, but I remember one spit one specific uh, person just like really struggled with that. And that's probably a shot to the ego, but that's all right. Try I'm, again next time. I've, I've had plenty of shots to the ego, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's just like a, you know, 150 pound dummy on the ground, just getting that on your shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. It's freaking not, not easy. I remember that. That really brings back a lot of funny <laughs> memories, right? Yeah. We had people <clears throat> puking in that too. Didn't we do... We also did a plank contest. Oh, yeah. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah, there Do you was remember a lot. That, that little Amy from my yeah. work? Yeah, didn't she? Yeah, she's the one that won it. Fucking stud. From your work, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. Well, she only weighs 80 pounds or mm-hmm. 90 pounds, so it helps, I think. But what <clears throat> my favorite story about her, she, I don't know if she worked for me. I can't remember if she was, she was well, I can't remember if I was her supervisor. I think I was. But uh, I challenged her. Um, why can't I remember her last name right now? God, I saw her every day for a million years. <laughs> Different life. Amy, is it Schaff? Anyway, um, yeah, I had to give her a bad, <laughs> bad time because she got remarried. And so I was like, I can't keep track of your name. But <laughs> yeah, anyway, I loved her. She was she was great. But um, I wanted to say her old last name, but no, I think it's Schaff. But uh, I said, you know what you could do? I said, if she loved training and getting in shape and you remember she did a great job on the plank. But I said, if you can do Pisca twice a day, every day for 30 days, you're going to notice. And that is hard mm-hmm. when you got a full-time job and it's during the winter. I remember, I think she wrapped it up like in November. So she did 30 straight days, Pisca twice a day. And she was like in shape. 
she was like, you showed her the secret recipe. It was awesome. I loved it. I remember her last day I went with her and it was pouring rain and we got a picture on the top, but yeah, she's just super tough. Definitely miss her. Um, but yeah, we've had some great times down there. I think she won that plank contest and like did it for four minutes or five minutes. The crazy thing is my father-in-law Floyd, mm -hmm. he at 63 years old, he held 12 minute plank. Mm. Yeah. Who? Savage. He wasn't, or wait, who is that guy there today? That was Floyd. Oh, was it? Yeah. That okay, was, that's what I thought that's it was. That's dad, yeah. Yeah, he did it for 12 minutes? Yeah, 12 minutes at 63 Jeez. years old. Is Levels. that the pool we used to go to? Huh? Do we used to go to his pool? Uh, no, no, that was that's Phil. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, but going back to when we were working together, of we're like really... Um, saw that improvement was like you know that recovery that we would spend a lot of time mm -hmm. on and hiring that team to get you when you had those injuries and mm -hmm. those injuries were always just i mean i remember that hamstring we just dealt mm -hmm. with that for a couple years yeah you know it was just always there but you still would just run on it mm -hmm. and i was just always sort of trying to whisper to you is like, hey, you know, pay attention to this injury and just trying to find those components to keep you up and running. And that was mm -hmm. one of the biggest things that really helped me, especially remember when I blew my knee out? Yeah. That was like the one of the worst days. Broke your patella tendon. Oh yeah, it was horrible. Kneecap was up in your quad. Yeah. Not yeah. good. And I think that just really... I mean, that just changed everything. That really taught me of, man, we got to make sure we stretch and take care mm -hmm. of that because my injury just, I never want that to happen to you oh. or anybody, anybody yeah. else. Yeah. So it just sort of made me a better coach, a better mm -hmm. understanding of warming up, getting ready, that priming that body for what yeah. we're asking of it. Yeah, that was, <clears throat> that was at that gym. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah. That was when we were making beast mode uh, training. That was we the day. We were starting the video. Yeah, you God. hired the crew. I was yeah. on cloud nine, dude. Oh. I was like, I was like making my first DVD. Yeah. And then blew my knee out. I was like, oh. well, this is the worst, best day to worst day ever. That was terrible. And then we came out the video, I had that stupid knee brace on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was bad though. I mean, it, it you know, you never think that, I don't know, you're playing basketball, you twist your ankle, this shit happens, yeah. right? But you went down and you were like acting, I mean, kind of in shock a little bit, like what the hell? And looking at your leg and your kneecap is up. Yeah, and I tried to get up. Remember I pushed it down yeah. and I tried to get up and the thing went back up in my quad. Yeah. And Tanner was there too. I don't mm -hmm. know if I traumatized him forever. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a rough one. But if... I think so you take that just like in life, you take a negative, you turn it into a positive. So you took that experience and you used it to mm -hmm. enhance your training. Yeah. And enhance your mindset. A better coach. Right. It really just made us like, man, you only got one body. You really need to take care of it and mm -hmm. do whatever you can to keep it up and running. And once we're getting older, man, our shoulders, our knees and things, I mean, your ankle, mm -hmm. and we're just trying to, keep it up and running so we can do what we want, what we love to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. It's, and so, yeah, you have been, you've really helped cause you used to do those, like the, the gun, the, the buffer, the buffer, the buffer, man, that thing was a little hammer golden. gun thing. Yeah. The gun the stretching. How many times, how much time did we spend stretching that nobody even knows about? No. Yeah. Hours. And you would hate that. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but you also introduced me to Jason and Aaron mm -hmm. who still come, they come twice a week and Aaron's Aren't they so good. So good. Aaron's incredible. So she does the acupuncture and then the massage, which I like to have her massage. I got to get mentally ready. Yeah. She's tough. She fucking hurts. Yeah. She doesn't hold back at all. It hurts. I had to give her the, she, she just um, massaged me the other day and I said, I go, listen, my pain receptors are like tapped out right now because of this fucking foot yeah so just gotta we just gotta chill today yeah did she <laughs> sort of i mean it still hurt <laughs> but for her she did scale it back and then jason does the cupping mm -hmm. and that i get a, some great response from that oh the My cupping's body. amazing with the active stretching yeah because yeah. it it just draws out blood to that area which is healing mm -hmm. you know and just stimulates that area so between 
cupping a massage, acupuncture massage between the two of them, my body, you know, I'm going to, you know, whatever this fucking foot thing. But other than that, I feel amazing. But that's, that's the, the strategy you implemented when you were here, yeah. you know, and when you left to Phoenix, you're like, well, I'm going to set these guys up. And, um, I think we took basically what I was paying you and just paid them. Yes. And it's, they it's switched hands. They yeah. switched the team, but they're not Robin. No, <laughs> there's only one Robin to Batman. No, I definitely miss having you here. Yeah, me too. I definitely uh, uh, miss coming over here all the time oh, and just trying to being in this room is just like, man, it's yeah brings a lot of memories and just uh, yeah, I, I missed you. I missed you a lot. Yeah, well, me too. And we, I miss those <laughs> 600 rep work, workouts, and I still do it, but it's not the same. No, it's not the same. <laughs> not the same. Sig Sauer is leading the firearm outdoor industry in American innovation, ingenuity, and manufacturing. For over 250 years, Sig Sauer has evolved and thrived by blending American ingenuity, German engineering, and Swiss precision. Sig is synonymous with industry-leading quality and innovation, which has made it the brand of choice amongst the U.S. military, the global defense community, law enforcement, competitive shooters, hunters, and responsible citizens. That's why I have decided to partner with them for my personal protection and concealed carry of choice. Sig and I are working on some pretty cool collaborations for the archer community as well, and I'm thrilled to have them as a sponsor of the show. Sig is actually offering you guys a discount on Optics 2, which is unheard of in the industry. I'm looking forward to trying out their new image stabilizing binos, the Zulu 6 on my bear hunt in Alberta with the rivets. Those are also 10% off using code CAM at SigSour.com. That's code CAM for 10% off. Montana Knife Company was founded by Josh Smith, one of the world's most experienced master bladesmiths. Josh has been making knives for 30 years, and there's something really special in supporting companies that are made in the USA. The blades are manufactured and shipping straight from Montana. Montana knives carry a multi-generational warranty and free lifetime sharpening. They're designed, tested, and built by hunters. MKC is a hunting knife company first and foremost. MKC is unmatched and have the sharpest knives out of the box and the easiest knives to sharpen. It's been really fun to watch a company explode as one of the fastest growing companies in the knife space. Don't be fooled. They are still a small company and just hired their 55th employee and are looking to hire about 50 more in the next year or so. So if you live in Montana, tell them Cam sent you. MKC knives sell out within minutes of being released. So head over to MontanaKnifeCompany.com. That is the best way to find out when they have knives available. Use code CAM10 for 10% off your first order. My favorite blade is a Blackfoot 2.0. Montana Knife Company, working knives for working people. Then I get my people in here and that's what sucks about it. I think like the biggest thing is that you left right before I started the lifter and shoot the show. Yes. And now, I mean, I wanted all these stars and athletes and whatever to, to experience like what you can do because it's so unique, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so we'll make it happen again. Well, let's bring it out for special occasions when you want to put some stank on some special guests. Yeah. Bring me out and let me do my thing. There you go. I love that. That's, that's what we'll do. It's a direct flight. It's quick. I'd come out here for you anytime. Okay, perfect. <laughs> well, we're going to make it happen when we get Goggins here for sure. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Why don't you tell them about that story, how my daughter oh. was born that night? Was it that night? Yeah, dude. It was the, so the, after the training, yes. man. So the most epic video of all time, <laughs> that's you. So, oh, that's, oh man, so glad you brought this well, up. Let's talk about it. Let's talk so about it. So glad you brought this up because- You brought it up. I've heard your voice so many times <laughs> on those video clips. Yeah. You know, I mean, 16. Should I be getting paid for that somewhere? Yeah, I don't know. I know. Where's I think your royalties? Should, yeah, where is that? I should be calling him, David, where's my royalties on this? I know you're using my voice. Yeah. It's, uh, but that video is like iconic, you know, cause he's, he's, the only thing is people get too wrapped up is we had 95 pounds on there on the incline. Right. But we had done. Oh. So much before that. Well, that's volume training, baby. Volume, that's yeah. That's volume training. People just don't understand, it, unless you've experienced yeah. that, of carrying the boats over a duration of time, man, the muscle is going to eventually shut down. Mm-hmm. And it was such an amazing moment to see him turn Goggins. Oh. We got him to turn Goggins twice. I know. 
And yeah. one time nobody even knew it. I mean, nobody even saw it. <laughs> what in the on the, the race? first day? Remember the first day? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the first day we're doing shoulders and he turned Goggins again. I, I was know. just like, remember we talked about flipping the switch? Yeah. Holy cow, it's it's so, real. Right. So we went. Um, so he came in on a Friday. We were going to do an ultra race on ultra marathon over at Pisgah frozen trail ultra on Saturday. So mm -hmm. he got in Friday and I'm like, well, normally people would like take it easy because they got an ultra marathon the next day. But, um, we said, all right, you're here. Let's go run Pisgah. So we went and ran Pisgah and he freaking crushed it. And I was like, God dang it. I was hoping this guy wasn't really good at Hills, but he was really good. So we did that. Then we went to the gym mm -hmm. over at, was it international? So oh what yeah. What was it called? Uh, yeah, it was International Fitness. Yeah, a Gateway Mall. <laughs> <laughs> we had David Goggins in Gateway Mall International Fitness and we we're doing this workout and it was that there was an evening and the evenings packed. Yes. Always packed. Yes. And so it didn't really cause that much of a stir because we didn't have the crew. We didn't right. It, it was, was just, just us. us. It was just us grinding away yeah, on that's a, right. a Friday night. On a Friday night. Yeah. So and Friday nights are usually a little slower in the gym. Mm -hmm. People are out. I was gonna go get drinks after work or whatever. So Friday nights were usually but still in the evening, so it's it's busy. But uh, yeah, really no fanfare, no big deal. I filmed on my phone a little bit. But yeah, he did he did have to flip the switch because we, you know, when you do that many reps. Yeah, we were it's just gonna suck. Yeah, we were just testing the waters to see what was going on. Yeah. We probed them a little bit. It was like, oh, there it is. I Let's know. save it for tomorrow. I know. <laughs> so so then we get up in the morning and we go out frozen trail. We do the ultra or we did it. And that was where I talked about with, with uh Rogan is he hit the wall and that too. And it's like something happened with his foot. He wanted to take a shoe off. And normally when people start making excuses type thing or coming up with little issues or it's, that's a sign. Yeah. You know, I mean, I used to tell Truett if, if he was racing somebody and they spit, that's a sign. That's a tell something they need. They're trying to do something because yeah. they hurt. So Goggins said, I need to take off my shoe, something about his foot. So I was like, okay, well me and Taylor, my brother, we were, to, he was a little bit ahead of us at that time, but I said, all right, I'll just go with Taylor and then you just catch up if you can. And I thought, I told Taylor, I said, yeah, we're probably not going to see Goggins again. You know, I don't know what's up. And that was like a mile 22. Well, I mean, he showed, showed, back, up, showed back up, showed back up and he ended up passing me. I had it like a calf issue, freaking Aaron. She like goes so hard. I had to. I learned a lesson on that one. She goes so hard. My calf was actually sore the next day. Anyway, at going 35 miles in this ultra going uphill, my, it was like locking up. So I told David, I said, yeah, go ahead. I'll, you know, whatever. So then he gets up on this last loop of this race and he's up at the summit. And that's when he's yelling at himself. Cause oh, Travis, yeah. the cameraman has his shirt off and everything told, running. Told, yeah, yeah. It was like spitting snow and he's like, you know, whatever they don't fucking, they don't know me. And, whatever but he's just going off and i asked travis i said well who is he yelling to and he's like when well, nobody's up here yeah so uh that was like that was he flipped the switch again mm -hmm. you know kicked ass i think he got uh i know it was under five hours which is a pretty good time for that ultra it's kind of a it was a tough one and um so that was good and then we went i think we shot bows after that it was out at wayne's did a good job there and then we had UFC that night. So this is going to be a, a full yeah, day. Yeah, full day, full day. And Love remember, you. do you remember what you told my wife? Because my wife was nine months pregnant. Uh, something about the baby? Yeah. No, you were saying, do not have the baby today. Oh, yeah. Because I we need needed you. Eric yeah. tonight. Do not have that child. Because she was ready to pop. We did acupuncture. We were doing everything to get this she baby just, out. I think she just clinched and just kept it in <laughs> yeah. because of that special request. Yeah. Because we needed you there. Yeah. Because you made the video, right? Yeah. I mean, well, you, it was a moment. Yeah. Had yeah, a moment. It was your, your voice and your audio that's just like so iconic in there but so then we go before ufc we're gonna get pizza we're gonna have cookies all this stuff we're gonna watch good fights but before that we had to lift yes because you have to do a lift run shoot mm -hmm. so we go over to international fitness it, now it's more dead because it's a ufc night it's saturday yep. which nobody, nobody's training on nobody saturday wants to go lift on saturday so we go in there and we just have this incredible workout incredible and we get to this last little blowout 
segment of, I think we're doing curls, incline bench, and then maybe it was skull crushers. Yeah, we had a nice little circuit going. Because True trained with yeah, us too. Yeah, this yeah. is True's been a beast for a while, but this was pre anybody knew he was a beast. This is where things changed. I <laughs> yeah. think this is where the spark really happened. Training with Goggins did. Yes, it, it really did. Yeah, it like took it. It took his mindset to another level. So I'm, you know, Goggins, I owe him, and he wrote part of my book. He's just, but as far as his influence on me and my family, I can, I'll, I can never quantify how important it's been because you just got to think about it. True, it took that workout and turned that into breaking the world record in yeah. pull-ups. Do you remember the today when the guy said, how do I get my son to be a savage or to a beast? <laughs> yeah. And we said, find somebody else. Yeah. Well, it wasn't you. Right. It was David that actually sparked true it into yeah. the savage he is today. That's true. Right? Yeah. Because that I, was it. Your dad can say whatever <laughs> over and over and over. Yeah. And they'll just t tune you out or, you know, rebel and just do the opposite. Yeah. I don't want to do that, Dad. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I always, you know, I say this. He could have been a great runner, or he is a great runner, but I told him, I said, you could run in college. You are mm -hmm. good. I mean, he got all conference when he's a freshman. And uh, he's like, in college, I don't want to run for four more years. So <laughs> it was just like, he's just going against whatever I said. But what is he doing now? He's back to running. He's back to Imagine running. Imagine that, yeah, right? Yeah. He's not very good because he's <laughs> too fucking too muscular. Yeah, too a body. Yeah. Too but, many lats. Uh, but yeah, that day changed the course of his life because just being influenced by Goggins and seeing after we did that crazy workout and Truett did good. I mean, he yeah. was fucking strong. He was in the mix. He was right in there. Yeah. But then afterwards, Goggins said, you know, be, when he finishes up a workout, he does a hundred pull-ups every time. He gave us the secret recipe. The secret. Yeah. And so Truett was like, hmm. he, yeah, he paid attention to that. He's like, wait, wait a hundred every day? So true, it started doing that. What was your best part of that day? Was that it? Was that that moment that we, that David flipped that switch? Uh, let me think. Best part of the day. It was, the day was incredible. Um, I think just every, let me see, if I had to say one time, I would say that, you know, because at that, we were doing that incline and I think we were doing, a hundred reps. Everything's a hundred. Everything a hundred, but however many sets it took you mm -hmm. to get a hundred. Yeah, it was just like how many can you do? Yeah. So if you did ten, you had ninety left. <laughs> if you only did five the next time, you got eighty five left. You better keep track. Yeah. So we, you know, the first set, I think I I can't remember if I did the most or Trude did the most, but I know that David did the least. Mm. And that wasn't that wasn't acceptable. That wasn't great. No. So he went from from that to like flipped a switch and then was crushing us. Yes. The, the next twenty five at the end. Yes. When everybody was failing. And that was when you were calling that out. Yeah. And uh, oh, and that's when he's like, he was looking at the camera. Who's going to carry the boats? Who's going to carry? The, and like. Well, I can't remember what he, what, how he ended it, but who's going to carry the fucking boats? Yeah, it was definitely right that. in the camera. Yes, so awesome. That was one of my, that was one of my favorite moments of just being a part of that, and it was such a, an epic moment. Yeah. I, so is that moment? Yeah. He got leaned into the camera after that set and said, "Who's going to carry the fucking boats?" Yes. It we, was. We got to see it one more oh time. Oh my god! I, but so after the workout, we went over to the house to watch the UFC fight. And then we went home mm -hmm. that night. Yeah. And sure as shit, wife's like, oh, my stomach's gonna hurt. Man, your water broke. Unclenched. Unclenched. <laughs> and the next morning, on yeah. oh, my mom's birthday, oh, Charlie man. was born. My mom passed away a few years ago. Oh. So for my daughter to be born on my mom's birthday was just another indication of man. It was just all meant to be. It was meant to be. The yeah. whole experience was meant to be. It was. It's uh, what a special. Well, special because, you know, your daughter was born mm -hmm. and so just, that's so amazing. And the, also my mom's memory. The gift of life. Yeah. Yes. And just to be it on, have it be on that day. Mm -hmm. 
and then still also be able to get the workout in. Yeah, we made and it all work. That it just, day. it just, you know, just worked out the way it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. And we got to thank God for that. Yeah, thank because, God. Thank you for that. Yeah, He orchestrated that whole experience. And uh, I think, didn't Jason bring some buffers over? Oh yeah, there was there was Didn't a lot he? there was a lot of dynamics. Yeah, but I think we hooked him up gym. with Baber. Yeah, but he brought. I think and he, he brought felt him to he the didn't gym. want to talk. He's like, I don't know if I should talk to him or not. I'm like, dude, he's just a human being. Just go mm -hmm. talk to him. Give him a buffer. He'll like it. He'll need it. Yeah, yeah. And then you got a picture. <laughs> You guys had your shirts off, just all flexing. I didn't. I didn't. I thought you had your shirt off too, didn't you? I hope not. Uh, I think you did. But we had to pull that picture back up. I'm a fat fuck. No, you're not. You're doing okay. <laughs> you're 55, almost 56. No, I am 56. Oh, shit. I know. I know. I'm old as hell. How? What are you, 50? I'm going to be 51 in August. So we're right there, man. Mm -hmm. We're halfway. We're in the third quarter. What do you think about that? We're just getting warmed up. <laughs> just getting warmed up. Yeah. feel pretty good, actually. I mean, do you? Yeah, for the most part, just uh, just the shoulders, just dealing with some shoulder yeah. injuries, but that's just wear and tear. I know. Hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I mean, I think we, it's different. Being in your 50s nowadays is different than back in the day because I still feel like we're doing pretty damn good for being what, you know, not long ago would be considered old. Yeah. I still, yeah. I feel, you know, again, other than this fucking recent thing, I feel great. Yeah. So, I mean, and you have a show coming up. Yep. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Yeah, eight weeks. I think it's number 43, man. And you look shredded right now already. I sure hope so. I got a show in eight weeks, dude. <laughs> I got to get ready for that. So how much do you weigh right now? Uh, right now, 185. What do you got to get to? Um, well, last year I was 176 at 7.1%. Uh, so my goal is to break 6% from the DEXA scan. So mm -hmm. I'll probably be around 176 again and somewhere around 176, 175. I just want to break that 6% from the DEXA scan because the guy at the DEXA fit, he says, nobody's ever reached it. I was like, I really? reached that, yeah. Okay, you'll do it. I don't know. It's it's very hard at 51 years old. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. More cardio. Yeah, more cardio. <laughs> less, what? less carbs. What do you do for cardio? Uh, just do that mountain. I just try to do yeah. that mountain and uh, it's right How by, by my house. Uh, I mean, pretty much I try to do it at least four or five days a week. Mm. It's, a, it's a good climb. You have to come out and try it. You'll love it. How many calories you burn doing it? Uh, four or five, you know, probably about 500 calories. Okay. Yeah, it's a good climb. But yeah. it's, it's, so you have to pay attention. It's, it's yeah. Uh, yeah, Phoenix is pretty cool, pretty cool spot. Yeah. How's, and uh, like, What's your goal as far as where you're at with training and your business? And are you are you happy with where you're at? You got some like good clients and oh, I got some great friends. But I mean, it's always about sharing. I just mm -hmm. love to share and give people that um, that little direction that might help them and give them those little pointers that we were talking with people today. There's just so much fog out there. Mm -hmm. There's just so much uh, people that are lost. There's just so many people just don't know where to get started. And I just want to be that, uh, that, that Robin for them, mm -hmm. you know, give them that little direction and help them with, you know, nutrition training or whatever that is. But there's a lot of people that need help. So do you do, do you do programming like for people out of the area that you don't train mm -hmm. specifically like yeah. meal plans and stuff? Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's just part of it is giving some people some direction, some goals to work toward. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, whatever people need and I can do it from afar, but I, I'll always love the, yeah. the in-person that we were experiencing today because that's, that's energy. Oh, I man. love just sharing that energy with people. But Me too. if you're out there, if you need any direction or help, please, I'm, I'm here to help you. I think like today, a great story, of course, you know, all the, all the beasts stand out, but I really liked hearing that guy who was, I think he was type two diabetic yeah. or right on the cusp of it and lost 50 pounds. And now he's, you know, I mean, he was working hard today, but he's made this, you know, I think his friend died of a stroke. Yes. That's what he said. And he was yes. younger than him. Mm -hmm. So just that healthy transition to just being a, leading a better life and you know, going to be around longer. I think he has kids too. Yeah. And so I love hearing stories like that where people, you know, they're just, 
it's just time. It's time for them to get serious about their health. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like that. And I just like that, you know, you're a great resource for that. You've enhanced so many people's lives. And who knows what it ends up turning into. I mean, decades longer of living, yeah. you know, if you do it right. So it's- For sure. And quality, not just looking at longevity, but the quality of life. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we're really looking at is yeah. it, who knows how long we're going to live, but- what kind of quality of life do you want to live? Mm -hmm. And what do you want to be able to do? And if you have kids, why wouldn't you want to lead by example and teach them of how to be healthier and teach them how to live a long, productive, quality life? Mm -hmm. And that's why I think people are sort of missing it, that they're not getting that foundation built. And that's where he, we were talking after. He's like, now where do I go? I've lost this initial 50 pounds. I'm like, well, now we have to fine tune it. Mm -hmm. We really have to fine tune it. You've got the initial, and most people would do the initial loss just by cutting crap out and exercising more. But there's a point that your body sort of stops and how do you get to that next level? And that's where the micromanaging, the fine tuning mm -hmm. will get people the results they want. Yeah. I think you made some <clears> great <throat> points today about about diet and when to eat, what to have to, for breakfast, what to have before a workout, how to, you know, you said the supplements, just like, you know, like the mountain house protein type type thing, but that is easy to digest and absorb into your body. Whereas like, uh, you know, a steak or whatever mm -hmm. is yeah. protein, but it takes a lot more to digest, a lot more blood in your stomach and things like that. So there is the supplementation. You you said you do a, a, me, a regular food meal, then, supplement it, then a meal, then supplement it, a meal, right? So you just kind of stack, like, uh, what is that? Just, fuck, I don't want to say. Well, I mean, it comes down Mix to, it yeah, well, it's digestion. I mean, yeah. you're, you're, you're really trying to not overload the digestive system. Mm -hmm. So you want it to have the nutrients it needs, but if you overload the system, it sort of gets stocked up. And when you're working with race cars, and that's why I think I'm working with race cars, because mm -hmm. that's your body, right? This is your temple. This is what you moves you. And especially if people have been eating crap for so long, their system doesn't work very well. So that's where supplements can make it a little easier on digestion and give your nutrients that you need. And it's a lot easier for your body to break down a liquid source than mm -hmm. a solid meal. So it makes sense. I mean, supplements are designed for athletes. They're designed for us. Yeah. So we should implement them in. I mean... I had Fritos today. Yeah. I, I didn't see that, but... <laughs> It's okay. You run a lot. I know. I was freaking starving. We had a long morning out there. <laughs> yeah. but it's, and it's, we missed lunch. I know. I know. Going, I just had some. John was making some nice chicken. Yes. Now nah, it'll still be there. Okay. I hope so. We're, we're, we're going to make the, I'm going to do, uh, I'm doing a couple podcasts here. So we're, you're going to be able to get out there and eat here in just a minute. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been good. Um, we still have, I'm mean, going to go back out there for this evening, but just incredible time, incredible group of people, John and Jen, you, you mentioned, you know, they got the, the lunch out there, but I'm going to shoot an apple out of the pig's mouth. You know, she's cooking up a whole pig. Did you see it? <laughs> no, I didn't see that. There's a whole pig on that Traeger grill <laughs> nice. and, and she's going to put an apple in the mouth and I'm going to shoot with my bow here. I'm going to shoot an arrow through the apple. It's so epic look, right there. Look look might as well start look, it off that way, right? Look forward to that. But uh, thank you, Eric. I mean, I wanted to have you on here, but it just had to work out where I, I needed to do it in person. Yeah. And uh, man, I've missed you. I love you. Thank you for coming on the podcast and thank you for just all the help you've given me over the years. Mm -hmm. Love you, brother. So thank you for, for being on the show. All right. Keep hammering. You too. <laughs> Every step I take, I move my truth. Every time they tell me stop, I use. Every comment, hate that makes my feel. Gather up my energy and boom. I hear them talking, saying the way that I move is so reckless. That is a part of my mind I've been blessed with. Giving my blood so I am relentless. My fault, they want someone to blame. They sent their hate, it fuels my pace. I am Roy Tough. I am the change, the fuel, endure. Feeling like Cam Haynes.